back in booktube thank you for stopping by my channel i hope quiet calm books can provide you with a safe calm space to talk and think about the literature that you love as you can see i have um my bookshelves back behind me again and that is because i am back home and today i'm going to be doing something that is really hard for me which is um unhauling a bunch of my books 2021 is almost over and 2022 is going to be starting soon which means out with the old in with the new i started filming this pretty late in the day so hopefully the sun doesn't go down while I'm mid filming because it's winter and the sun goes down at like 4 p.m. and that sucks. So basically I'm going to be cutting down um, a bunch of the books that I have because I'm going to be permanently moving out of this house pretty soon. I will be moving to the east coast. I'm not sure where yet but I cannot possibly take all of these books with me. I'm going to try and take most of them because I'm crazy and I have a book problem, uh, as you all probably know, but I'm going to at least try to cut down some of them today. I'm going to be using Marie Kondo's method to uh, eliminate some of my books today. For those of you who don't know, Marie Kondo is a Japanese woman who is like incredible at cleaning and unhauling and decluttering things. And her method is to only keep items that spark joy. So for me, I'm only going to be keeping books that I've either already read and have rated four or five stars on Goodreads. And I'm also going to be keeping books that I have yet to read and actually intend to read but books that I've had for years and have still not read and I'm probably never going to read or books that I've rated three stars or under I will be getting rid of today a lot of people donate or sell their unhauled books which are both great options I have personally decided to rehome all of these books in little free libraries um, around the area that I live in I explored some little free libraries in my New Orleans book shopping video, if any of you watched that, and I just thought they were so gorgeous and I love the premise of donating book and then taking a book. I don't know that I'm necessarily going to be taking as many books as I'm donating because I have a lot of books and also I'm trying to get rid of books, not take more in. I just love the premise. So we will be going to some little free libraries in my area and I will be filming as I donate all of my books. So to start off, I'm going to show you some of the books that I've chosen to unhaul. I have three categories. I have young adult books that I'm unhauling. I have um, old school books that I had to read for school that I'm unhauling. There's a lot of those. Don't tell my professors. And then I have kind of an etc. pile that is mostly like adult fantasy that I'm unhauling. And I'm going to explain some of the reasons as to why I'm giving these books away, but I'm not going to show you all of them. I'm trying to keep it to just a few sentences per book so I can show you the fun part, which is actually going to the little free libraries. Okay, so starting out with this big pile of school books that I have, here I can try to show you. These are all the books that I, well, not all, but some of the books I had to read for school that I'm getting rid of either because I disliked them or I will probably never read them again. So we're gonna start out with this one. This is called Nickel and Dimed. But this is probably my least favorite book in the whole world. It was written by a journalist who chose to go undercover as a as a poor person. Um, and I just thought the premise was kind of problematic and outdated and this one is also marked up um, with all of my angry annotations as I was reading it. I was very angry. But um, yeah, because this is so marked up, this one's probably just gonna go in the trash. So next school book we have, this is called The Last Man by Mary Shelley. I actually really like this cover. I think the mountains are cool. And I have still yet to read Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I do intend to read Frankenstein. This one, I only read about half of it and the writing style just wasn't for me. Hopefully that doesn't mean that I won't like Frankenstein. Honestly, I think I should have started with that one because like, Frankenstein is the definition of Mary Shelley, um, but this one is um, about like a world ending plague. I am going to give Mary Shelley another try. Uh, this one's just not for me. So next up, next school book, uh, this one is called In Search of Respect. This one I actually did enjoy. This is a really interesting anthropological study about um, drug dealers and urban life. I just don't see myself reading it again ever and I'm ready to pass it on to someone who has never read it before and can learn something from it. Next up we have Atonement by Ian McEwan. This one is a retelling of Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. 
if any of you have read that. I actually really enjoyed Northanger Abbey personally, but I just didn't vibe with Atonement as much. It's primarily set during the Second World War and historical fiction is not really my cup of tea, so I am letting this one go. Okay, next we have a couple more um, classics. These ones I had to read in high school. Um, this one is Hard Times by Charles Dickens. I just remember this one being extremely, extremely dense. I didn't like it. I do like Dickens' A Christmas Carol, but other than that, I just don't know that the rest of his books are going to be for me. If you're really into 19th century literature, I'm sure you'll enjoy this, and I'm sure someone else will enjoy it, because I know Dickens is very beloved by many people, so I don't mean to offend um, any classic fans out there. Actually, now that I say that, this one's gonna go too. This is A Tale of Two Cities. Again, sorry to any Dickens fans, but yeah, he's just not it for me. Last three books in this pile, we have A River Runs Through It. This one I was supposed to read for a class that I actually ended up not taking. I'm never gonna read it. I've been holding on to it, telling myself I'm going to read it. I'm not going to, so we're getting rid of this one. We also have Pigs in Heaven by Barbara Kingsolver. And then we have The Taiga Syndrome by Christina Rivera Garza. Um, I read both of these. I don't really remember what they're about, so obviously it is time to let them go. So next up, we have my huge stack of YA books. I don't wanna drop any. Um, I don't know why they're all like black and blue color scheme. That wasn't intentional. Some of these were definitely really hard for me to let go of. I hoard YA books obsessively, um, but I, like I said, I'm really trying to give up books that I rated like two or three stars, um, even if the covers are very pretty, if I don't intend to continue a series or a book just doesn't stick out to me as memorable, then I'm going to give it away to someone who will hopefully enjoy it more. So first up, we have Cinder by Marissa Meyer. It's actually wild to me that people are still discovering The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer now, because I actually bought this book, I think the year it came out. Yeah, 2012. And I actually remember um, the Scholastic Book Fair coming to my school in 2012, and this was one of the books I picked out. This is a fairy tale retelling of Cinderella set in the future, except Cinderella is named Cinder, and she is a cyborg and a mechanic. It's a really cool premise, and I remember really enjoying it uh, when I read it at the time. It is kind of the first book that got me interested in fairy tale retellings, but um, I'm just never going to continue the series and I don't see myself rereading it, so I'm gonna give it away to someone else. So the next one we have here, this is called Morpheus Road Light by DJ McHale. Again, this is one I really did enjoy when I first read it and that's why some of these are so hard to give away. This one is actually signed as well. I actually won this in a signed books basket at my library, which I was super excited about and was super cool. This is a little spooky YA horror novel about like monsters that come to life off the pages of the main character's sketchbook, which is a really cool premise and the supernatural elements were awesome, but I just wasn't invested enough to continue the rest of the series. And I'm at the point where I think I'm probably a little too old um, for the target audience like of this series now, so I will be passing it on. Next up, uh, Across the Universe. This is a YA um, sci-fi novel about a girl named Amy who agrees to get put to sleep in like a hyper sleep pod and get sent to space and she wakes up 300 years in the future on a super cool spaceship and it's kind of about her adventures in the future, figuring out why she's awake. Uh, kind of like Morpheus Road, this one I really enjoyed when I read it but it's just been such a long time since I read it. Um, it didn't stick with me and I'm not going to continue the series. Next up, we have Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. This one might be kind of controversial. I know a lot of YA fans love Lainey Taylor, um, especially her other book, Strange the Dreamer. And I have actually read Strange the Dreamer, which I enjoyed slightly more than this one, but I just kind of gradually lost interest in continuing either of those series over time. This one's going to be getting unhauled. Okay, so next up we have a YA book that I actually haven't read. This one is called Moon Chosen by PC Cast. The cover is very pretty. It is super holographic and shiny. And I picked this book solely based on the cover, knowing nothing about it. And then I ended up doing some research and found out that it has some 
extremely problematic elements. Uh, so of course I won't be reading it and it is not coming to New York with me. So I actually talked about this one in a previous video um, before I had finished it. And this was a book I was actually super excited to read. This is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I absolutely love V.E. Schwab's writing. Her villain series is like one of my favorite book series of all time. And this book is absolutely gorgeous. Um, so this is about a girl who never dies. She made like a deal with the devil, essentially in exchange for never dying. She wouldn't be remembered by anyone she met. It is a super cool premise, but for some reason I just couldn't get into this one. So. I am passing it along. I also talked about um, this one in one of my recent videos. This is Caraval by Stephanie Garber. I mentioned that I just really wasn't vibing with the writing style of this one. I actually feel like it could be geared more towards like a high school age audience. Maybe that's why I wasn't into it as much. It is really cool premise. It's extremely atmospheric. It just is not for me, so I uh, will be putting it in a little free library and hopefully someone else can enjoy it. Okay, finally, from that huge stack, we are down to the last YA book. This is called This Is Where It Ends. This is a very serious book about a school shooting, and I just felt like it read kind of like an ordinary YA novel, even though the topic is so serious, and that just didn't sit right with me, uh, so I'm not hauling this one. And finally, oh boy, we have books falling here. This is a very precarious stack. Here it is. Um, this is my last random stack of like thrillers and adult fantasy. Okay, so this first one is probably going to be very controversial. I'm unhauling A Game of Thrones or A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin. I know how much people love this book and I feel really sad that I couldn't get into it. Um, I actually had to read it for a class on like medieval literature. I really thought I was gonna love it, but I was just kind of disappointed with like the pacing of the book and the way that some of the characters are written. So um, maybe if I ever watch the show, it will be better, but this book just wasn't as engaging as I thought it would be. Some more possibly controversial books here that I bought because I was interested in the TV show, which in hindsight, maybe I should have watched the TV show first, but. I've always been a proponent of read the book before you watch the show. And these books I just felt like were really overhyped. So this is Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. And then we have The Last Wish. This is the first book in the Witcher series. Because these books are so hyped, I'm hoping someone else will like them more than I did, but these just were not for me. For those who don't know or haven't watched my bookshelf tour, which was my first YouTube video ever, I am somewhat ashamed to say that I was a warrior cat fan in middle school. It's fine, we all gotta start somewhere, right? So this one um, is called Survivors, The Empty City, and this was essentially a book about warrior dogs. Hopefully needless to say, I'm at the point in my life where warrior cats do not spark joy. Next up, we have The Maker of Swans, and the premise is pretty interesting. It's about people who harness magic through like words and writing, but to be honest, it was a little too abstract for me and just possibly over my head. Finally, we have a couple random books that I've never read and just don't plan to read. I only have so much time to read and I'm really trying not to feel guilty for getting rid of books that I'm not interested in anymore and spending time reading books that I'm actually excited about instead. Here's the last couple that I'm getting rid of. We have Breathless by Dean Koontz, probably just never gonna read this one. We have The Devil Aspect by Craig Russell. This is a hefty one and I do not even remember why I was interested in this, but it doesn't really seem like my vibe anymore. We have The Life We Bury by Alan Eskins. And then finally, we have Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. Okay, and with that, um, that is all of the books that I'm unhauling, or at least all of the ones that I am going to show you guys. So without further ado, let's go deliver these books to their new homes in some little free libraries. So I ended up going to a total of four different little free libraries to drop off all my books. This first one was probably my favorite because it has a cute little bench where you can sit and read and also has two separate libraries, one for kids and one for adults. I tried to put a variety of different genres into each library because I don't know what books the people in this neighborhood are into, but I mostly made use of the adult library because as I showed you, I don't have a lot of kids books. I only put four books in at first, but I realized I could fit a lot more, so I made a few more trips to my car. Hmm. 
moving on to the next little free library. It's this kind of quaint white one, and I'm really glad that I was able to contribute some more contemporary young adult reads to this library because I noticed it had mostly very old paperbacks and students' old school books. I really felt like a bookmobile carrying all these books around in my car and delivering them to different libraries. Does anyone else have a bookmobile in their town that brings books from libraries to local neighborhoods back and forth? I had one in the town where I grew up, but I haven't seen them around NYC, and I really miss walking around inside a bus filled with books. You'll also notice that I added a few extra books here that I didn't talk about earlier. Library number three had this cute little sign, and I absolutely love the reddish color of the paint on this one. It just makes it feel so cozy. This one was already pretty full, which was great to see, and I could only fit about three books in there. I honestly think it would be a lot of fun to start my own little free library, but people in NYC are always leaving books for others to take on park benches or apartment stoops, so I feel like these libraries will hopefully make better use of my old books. And last but not least, this adorable little library was decorated with Christmas lights and even had a Mickey Mouse doorknob. It also had lots of children's books, mostly Christmas books, which were so cute, and I really just tried to add some more variety by adding some young adult and adult books. I hope you had fun watching me unhaul these books. I'm so excited to move into a new apartment and show you all my new setup within the next year or so. If you like this video, please subscribe. My channel is still new and I'm still getting a feel for what content everyone wants to see. Also, please comment and let me know if you want to see more bookstore tours, hauls or unhauls, book reviews, or something else entirely. Thank you so much for watching and Happy New Year!